There are a few things that truly upset me in life. Obnoxious, noisy neighbours at all hours of the day and night. Having to wake up early on cold, dark mornings. And the Fatal Frame movie. I've now seen this film three times, which is three times too many. But this week we're going to take a look at this collection of images on celluloid that sadly aren't stupid sexy ghosts wanting to drag me to the netherworld, which is honestly where I'd rather be, and examine why it's not just an incredibly poor Fatal Frame adaption, but a terribly dull film all around. Now, before we get started, I'm not here to tell you not to watch the movie. On the contrary, I'm a strong advocate of people always watching something for themselves, regardless of how others feel. You may genuinely enjoy it, and if so, fantastic. I do hope that by the end of this video, however, that if you haven't seen the movie yet, then you'll have enough information to prepare yourself for it before you go in. Or, if you have seen it, that you'll at least find this somewhat entertaining and maybe even informative. So, with that said, let's get straight to it. Zero, Geki Joban, was released on September 26, 2014, in Japan. It is, of course, an adaption of the Fatal Frame series, although in this case, more specifically, it's an adaption of the novel Zero, The Curse That Only Affects Girls, which was written by Otsuka Eiji to coincide with the Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater release. Otsuka Eiji actually helped work on the story and lore for that game, so you would think he would know what he was doing, but uh... Well, I'm not going to get into the book itself in this video. I remember reading it when it came out and thinking, huh, well, it certainly has Fatal Frame in the title, I suppose. Japanese reviews for the book also aren't very kind and can be distilled into, if you enjoy Fatal Frame, then this is not for you. At any rate, the film was directed by Asato Madi, a horror director whose filmography is a long list of films I've seen and hated, so I'm starting to think we just don't gel very well. She personally adapted Oltzka's book into a film script, and in an interview with Mantan Webb during the film's release, claimed that she wanted to create something beautiful but scary. She also claimed that horror movies are, in general, aimed at men, so she wanted to create a horror movie specifically for girls, and she hoped that women who didn't usually watch horror would also watch this film. So, how was this aimed at girls? To very briefly sum the plot up, it's set at a Catholic all-girls school, where there are rumours of a curse. The curse affects girls who kiss the photo of someone they like at midnight, Another girl, of course, because the point of the film is the forbidden love between two women which is what started the curse in the first place. But if you do this, you will soon disappear, and before long, people claim to see the spirit of Aya, the most popular girl at school, lurking around the campus. It is she who is kidnapping all these girls who are in love with her, or so the rumours go. I'm not going to get into spoilers in this review, you'll have to watch the film yourself if you want to know the absolutely fascinating details of what happens. But hearing that, you may be wondering a few things already. First and foremost, how is this even a Fatal Frame movie? A great question, let's take a look. When you think of Fatal Frame and try to distill it into its most basic elements, there are probably three or four things that come to mind, depending on how generous you want to be. 1. The Japanese setting Series creator Shibata originally started the games because he wanted to do something in a traditional Japanese setting, during a time when other Japanese creators were mostly setting their horror games in western locations. This was a very conscious decision on his part, and every single one of the series' five main games is set in a uniquely Japanese location with uniquely Japanese elements. Second, the camera obscura itself. You can't have a Fatal Frame game without the most iconic item from it. When the name Fatal Frame comes to mind, 
you no doubt immediately see a woman holding a camera fighting off a ghost. That's what the games are. You can't have them without the camera that fights ghosts. You just can't. The camera is the main focus of the games. Third, each and every game somehow ties to Dr. Asso, the camera obscura's creator. But Tara, I already hear you protesting. Dr. Asso doesn't even feature in the first game. Yes, but that's only because he was cut from the game's script because they felt it was too bloated with his storyline there. The camera Miku uses is still an asshole camera, and the plot that they were going to use was then added in later games. Dr. Asol has existed in the Fatal Frame universe since the very start, and it always ties back to him somehow. Lastly, and always the lifeblood of the games, we have the rituals. Again, every single Fatal Frame entry features a ritual that went wrong in the past, that now affects the present day. The ritual that causes all of these ghosts to hang around that you have to battle with your Dr. Asol made camera. These rituals are all tied to various hell gates around the country and are generally carried out to keep those gates sealed and stop the other side from seeping into our world. When the rituals fail, then bad stuff goes down and it's up to us in the modern time to fix it with our trusty camera. So, we have traditional Japanese settings, the camera obscura, Dr. Aso, and old failed rituals. If we look at the Fatal Frame movie, can we find any of these four simple things? Well, no, not really. The movie is set in a Catholic all-girls school, as I mentioned earlier. There is nothing traditionally Japanese about this at all. In fact, the movie could have been set anywhere. The US, UK, Australia, whatever, and it would have had zero impact on the plot. There is not a single thing in the movie that requires it to be set in Japan. This is perhaps the film's biggest crime, but let's keep going. The camera obscura, the visual icon of the series. Is it in the movie? Well, kind of. A side character has a camera that looks suspiciously like one, and his mother has a few more at her camera shop, but that's where it ends. The camera isn't once used to fight off a ghost. At best, it's a camera that sees ghosts, and that's it. It takes the photo of the ghost that's used for the curse, and that's about it. It feels shoehorned in, simply because they needed to have it there for people to recognise that, yes, this is a Fatal Frame film, but the movie could easily exist without it being there at all. Now, Dr. Asol, does he appear here? Of course not. Why would he? Two characters are revealed to have the name Asol laid into the film, and that's about as close as it gets. Again, it feels more like a wink-wink, nudge-nudge moment, to appease series fans than anything else. There is literally zero reason for either of these characters to have the Asol name, and there is zero mention of them being related to the Good Doctor as well. In the games, each character related to Dr. Asol is related to him for a very good reason, and that reason usually explains why they have a camera obscura in the first place. That doesn't happen here. They're just named Asol for the hell of it. Finally, the rituals. Again, there's no ritual to stop a Hellgate from opening and flooding our side here. There's no ritual at all, really. The curse that makes up the main point of the film is less of a ritual and more of an urban legend. Nothing happened that caused all hell to literally break loose and unleash ghosts upon a particular area of Japan. There's no old tradition of sacrifice that went wrong and caused untold disaster. Even if we accept a ritual on a smaller, more personal scale, there is still nothing resembling anything of the sort here. At best, it's an urban legend akin to something like Hanako-san in the third stall of the third floor toilets, who appears when you knock three times to kill you because she also happened to die there too. It's a curse, 
an urban legend. That's not the backbone of Fatal Frame. Rituals are. So, as an adaption of Fatal Frame, this film fails at every single step. There is zero reason for this film to be called Fatal Frame, other than wanting the money of Fatal Frame fans. When it comes to video game adaptations, this is sadly not an unheard of story. That's how they tend to go, and we're almost always left disappointed. But okay, let's set that aside for now and focus on the movie purely as a horror movie. Forget entirely about Fatal Frame. How is the movie then? Well honestly, it fails as a horror film as well. Horror is subjective. What I find scary, you might not. Everyone enjoys different things when it comes to horror. Some may enjoy ghosts and the supernatural. Others may find slashes to be more their thing. But the goal of horror, at the end of the day, is still to scare audiences. There's nothing scary in this film. I honestly find it hard to even objectively describe it as horror. There's no horror in it. At best, it's a drama with very, very thin supernatural elements. Numerous reviews for the film in Japanese point this out as well. It's not very scary. It honestly has rather weak horror elements. At least the theme song is good. There's very little horror about it. There aren't enough horror scenes to call this a horror movie. Etc. and so forth. If you go into this film expecting to be scared, you will be horrifically disappointed and perhaps scared only by how long this 105 minute film actually feels. Promoting this as a horror film was a mistake, because it's not, but considering that they were supposed to be adapting one of the scariest video game series of all time, there was no other way they could describe it. But that just sets the audience up for even further disappointment. You're not getting Fatal Frame, and you're not getting horror. At best, this movie features mostly girls, and so do the video games. So, uh, there's that, I guess. I'm going to be honest, and if you haven't picked it up by this point, I don't like this film. I dare say I can't stand its existence. As a woman who loves Fatal Frame, I am supposedly the target audience, and yet I can think of few films I dislike more than this one. The disappointment was too great, but on top of that, the boredom was immense. If you watch this simply as a drama with lesbian elements and a tiny hint of the supernatural and don't expect to be scared, well, I still think the film is boring as hell, but you might be less disappointed than going in expecting anything else. But at the end of the day, besides not being scary in any way whatsoever, I think the film's biggest failing was the decision to move away from a traditional Japanese location and rituals that are tied very heavily to Shinto, and instead set it in a Catholic school that could literally be anywhere in the world and not change the story one little bit. It's not Fatal Frame, not even in the least, and it's not even a good film either. But what do you guys think about this one? I'm sure at least some of you enjoyed the film, while I've no doubt many others were disappointed, just like me. Let me know what you thought about the film in the comments below, and I'll see you again next time.